you. God bless you. You may be seated. If you can't give a high five to someone next to you, tell them Jesus is alive. Turn to someone else. Tell them Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. Buona Yesu asifiwe. Buona Yesu asifiwe. Are you well today? Are you blessed in the house of God? Amen. What a joy, what a privilege it is to be with you here today. It is good to see all of you. You look lovely from where I'm standing. We bless the Lord for you. My name is Brian Moshigadi. In case you have visitors, I'm born again. Jesus Christ is Lord over my life. I'm so excited to be here in the presence of God today. It is the honor of my life to serve God here. And the Bishop Dr. Jimmy and Pastor Alice Kimani. We bless the Lord. If you're a visitor, allow me to say welcome to Shiloh Worship Center, a place of breakthrough. We love you. We bless the Lord for you here today. If only where you're seated, you can decide in your heart, I'm going to be in agreement with God's word. Your life will never, ever be the same again. Want to bless the Lord for Pastor Joy Waiderero in the house. Celebrate Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. We bless the Lord for you. Karibu sana. Today in Jesus' name. Just before we begin to share, today is a great day. A great day here at Shiloh Worship Center. A great day because our bishop, Bishop Dr. Jimmy Kimani, is going to be launching one of his books in the second service. And so you might want to stick around for that. That is going to be a thing to look at, all right? Redigging and Repossessing the Wells of Our Fathers. That's the title of the book that is going to be launching today in the second service. So, kama unakuanga na haraka, you might want to stick around just for that. Just for usiketi, ukuje tu ukai ukonyuma, ndiyo watu wa ile service ingine wa pate viti, sao sao. Um, but we're looking forward to that today. And after that, the books are going to be at the tent so that you can copy your own copy um, for the same. All right, we go right into the word of God. John chapter 3 is where we are at today. We're going to do a couple of things by the grace of God. We ask that the Lord will pace us today in Jesus' name. John chapter 3 from verse 1 to 21. It's a lot of verses, about 21 actually, that we are going to go through. We might not read all of them at the beginning, but we're going to go through these things today. John chapter 3 from verse 1 to 21. A story, the stories that we're going to find here are very common stories. Are stories that most of us, if not all, have either heard, read for ourselves, or come across. And so we're going to be looking at them, reminding ourselves, and allow also that God would breathe freshness into it. Remember what Pastor Ali says to us, that when it comes to the reading of the word, it's not about newness, it's about freshness. And so we trust God that even though this word is not new, you've had it before, you've had it in your Bibles, you've been with it for a long time. Today, it's going to be fresh in the name of Jesus Christ and to the glory of God. This story is about the new birth or the new life. So that's what we're going to be titling it today, the new life in Jesus. It starts by saying that there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do the things that you do unless God is with him. If you take it just a little back to chapter 2 towards the end, verse 23, right about there, it says that now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did. When Jesus was out there doing the work of God, many people believed in his name because they saw the signs that he did. When we bring it now closer to where we are in chapter 1, it tells us that Nicodemus was one of those ones because it says many, not all, but many people saw the signs and wonders that Jesus did and they believed that he was truly from God. So Nicodemus must have been one of them. It says a man of the Pharisees. He was a Pharisee. He was a member of the ruling council, which was called the Sanhedrin. Nicodemus was um, high in the society, if you'd like to put it that way. Now, it says he was a Pharisee. Who are the Pharisees? The Pharisees were a group of religious leaders whom Jesus and John the Baptist often criticized for being hypocrites. All right. If you are like me when we were in high school, sometimes we used to call each other Pharisees. When somebody is not doing the right thing, when a believer is not doing the right thing, when they are being hypocritical, when they are looking at the other person and failing to see the log in their eye, they are looking at the speck in the other person's eye, those people we used to call Pharisees. And some of us, by the grace of God, were called those names, but for the grace of God. 
we continue to stand today. All right, don't stand to your neighbor and say Pharisee, okay? <laughs> now, though these Pharisees came from all different walks of life, unlike there was another group of people called the Sadducees. The Sadducees came from nobility. They were high and mighty people, okay? The Sadducees came from Palaju, but the Pharisees came from all walks of life. Even though they came from all classes of life, the Pharisees separated themselves from anyone that was non-Jewish. They carefully followed the Old te um, Testament laws and the oral traditions that had been passed um, down. Now, you would, you would remember that a lot of um, the traditions of Israel back in the day were passed. It was oral, okay? The way of preserving the law or the traditions or the culture was oral. So it would be, if you would find it in Deuteronomy, the Bible says that these people were asked to um, teach their children to write those things in their houses, inscribe, inscribe the laws of God, wear them around their necks, to make sure that they are able to pass them from one generation to another. It used to be real story time. A lot of us might not know about that, but our parents would tell you that whenever they would go to the village, to their grandparents' house, around the fire, the grandparents would sit with them and tell them, Mambo ya jadi na jadudi kwa kweli. Wana wambia hadithi, hadithi. Unakumbuka hadithi, hadithi. Enjoy your sasa. That, that used to be a thing, even in scripture, okay? That's how we are able to get, before it, was started, to be, it started to be recorded, we get it because there are people that were faithful. They would sit around the fire and give stories. They would sit around whatever they were doing and share about, even about how God rescued Israel from Egypt. That's how that story was preserved for a long time before it came to be written. Before, because now if we want it, we can just flip our Bibles to the book of Exodus and we can find the story. But before that came, it used to be passed down from one person to another. So here's a tip from you, my young people. Whenever you get children, when the Lord brings that, please do not give up the habit of sharing with them what the Lord has done. Tell them about the testimonies of how the Lord brought you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Whenever you sit with your friends, do not give up the habit of sharing one to another. That's why the church has been constituted like it has. When the scriptures call us in the book of Hebrews to not give up the habit of meeting or coming together one to another, going to your cell meetings, your fellowships, your small groups. That is so that we can share one to another the mighty works of God. When the Bible talks about it, and we said it, you see it a lot here at the youth service, in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, it says that you are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, God's royal nation, um, and he has called you out of the darkness into his, uh, that you may be able to tell the works of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous. One of the assignments of your calling is to tell so I know we like to say that when you're preaching the gospel, you should use your actions. In, in, only if you must use your words. But there's nothing against using your words if your actions are going together with them. The problem is if only you're a believer by words and then by actions you're not. So anyway, the tradition used to be passed on and passed down. So the Pharisees that we're now talking about, these Pharisees used to follow to the letter all the Old Testament laws, all the things, the rules that, and the regulations that had been given, all about over 600 of them used to keep them religiously and the traditions that had been passed down to them. Now, the problem is they used to follow and follow only those ones, but then there are so many other things about life that should exemplify the kindness of God and the goodness of God that they did not embody. The Bible will remind us about um, the same in, in Luke chapter 18 when Jesus is teaching about prayer. It talks about a Pharisee and a tax collector. And the Pharisee goes before God and he's going in prayer. And his prayer has nothing about humility. He just goes to God and he's saying, I thank you because I give. I thank you because I fast. I thank you because I am nothing like this wicked tax collector. That is what the Pharisees used to look like. And that, that's why they used to be... Um, criticized heavily by John the Baptist, even by Jesus. Now, most of them were intensely je jealous of Jesus because Jesus undermined their authority. He challenged their views. But Nicodemus, the Pharisee, that's why we are talking about Pharisees, remember? Nicodemus, who was also a Pharisee, was, was looking for something. If you were here in the second service last Sunday, we talked about the rich young ruler 
All right? In Matthew, is it 19? We, looked about the, we talked about the rich young ruler. This man had everything. He was in the rule. He was a ruler. He had influence. He was wealthy. He was young. But he knew there was something. There was a space in his heart that just wasn't filled. Because how many of you know, it doesn't matter how much getting you do, until you get Jesus, the real life, you will never have enough. There will always be something you're looking for. That's why if you look at the movies and look at the culture and look at social media, you will find there are many people, celebrities, who seem to have everything. But you look at their lives and you're wondering, I am so glad I don't have that kind of money, but I have Jesus. I don't know whether you've looked at somebody's life who looks like they have everything you've ever wanted, but they don't have Jesus. And you realize you don't even want what they, want, they have. Because Jesus asks it in those very phenomenal words, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? Because there is a space in the heart of man that only Jesus can plug. So Nicodemus comes in what we call the Nicodemus hour. Messiah giza kwa kweli. Many people ask, why did Nicodemus come in the night? Now that is neither here nor there. It might have been because he was um, afraid of being seen around the master. But he was a teacher of the law coming to another teacher, okay? So it, must have, it might have been because Jesus used to be followed by throngs and crowds of people. And the only time he could get some, some, some time, some moments of privacy was in the night. So whether it was night or day he came, we might get some good insight from Nicodemus right there. For those of us that are waiting for a perfect time to come to Jesus, you're waiting for a time you're afraid. Nitakuja kwa Yesu usiku. Nitakuja kwa Yesu sazile hakuna watu wengi. Nitakuja kwa Yesu sazile ni mezeka, zeeka. Sazile si chomi, sita choma nini. Sazile ni masafisha rada. We ujui kuna wazee wenye wanachomanga badu? Si mnajua wazee? Na washosho wa bad, wazi, wanakoroga na kupika pombe. So si kusema ati hizi vitu, dhambi si age specific. Kwa sababu ukizeeka bila yesu, utakuwa mzee mtovu wa nidhamu kwa kweli. Mwambie jirani yako unaitaji yesu. Hai geukia mwingine mwambie unaitaji yesu. No matter how intelligent or educated you are, and we find that in the example of Nicodemus, who was a high priest, who was a ruler, who was in the high places, no matter how intelligent you are, you must come to Jesus with an open mind, with an open heart that he will transform you. Because salvation, the scriptures would remind us, is found in no one else but Jesus Christ alone. Not in our education, not in our papers. It would be fitting for you to get all things. But then, with all your getting, to get Jesus. The Bible will remind us, is it in Proverbs 4 and 7, that therefore wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all thy getting, get understanding. Now, those things we've been told are principal are found in only one place. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6, that the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. These things that are principal, this wisdom and understanding are not gotten anywhere else. Not in books, they are gotten from God. So when it says wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. In Proverbs 2.6, it takes us back to the source of all those things. It says that it is the Lord that gives wisdom. And from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. If you're looking for those things, get Jesus. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, get Jesus. Buana Yesu asifiwe. So Nicodemus comes to Jesus personally. Though he was a person of influence, he would have sent somebody with a letter. Tell the master to explain these things to me. I need to understand. And maybe Jesus would have responded. But we get another great quality from this man who came in the night. He came to Jesus himself. Himself. We might get a lot of comfort and answers for our problems if we went to Jesus ourselves. It's great to sit and listen to a pastor teaching. I mean, that's why I'm here. It's great. It's great for you to turn on YouTube and listen to a few speakers. It's great for you to subscribe to DCIKZ on the go on Spotify and Podbean and listen to the sermons. That's amazing and that's a plug as well. It is amazing for you to do those things, but you must get Jesus for yourself. You must come to Jesus for yourself. You must carve out some precious time out of your busy, busy schedule and get Jesus. You must carve out some time to listen to what he's saying. Do it in the noontime, do it in the night, do it in the early morning, but by goodness, you must do it. 
You cannot afford to relegate that duty to another teacher. What if I don't do my Bible study? What if I come here and the things I am speaking are no longer of God? Will you be doomed to listening to those things? You must get Jesus for yourself. The Berean church that we many times say you must be a Berean, that we went to search the scriptures and check the preachers of the day by the scriptures or against the scriptures were known because they went to get Jesus for themselves. Like Nicodemus, you and I will find great, great benefit, beloved, if we just go to Jesus. Have you any answers, questions? Go to Jesus for your answers. The song used to be sung, Jesus is the answer for the world today. You ask yourself, what was the question? If you look at your life, you realize that's the question. Una mambo mengi ambayo hawi aelewi kwa kweli ndugu mpendo wa dada yangu kwa kweli ndani ya Yesu. Lakini Yesu ndiye jibu. Mwambie jirani yako, Yesu ndiye jibu. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. We continue in verse 3. So he's come to Jesus in the dead of night and said to Jesus, I have heard the things you're doing. I've seen the things you're doing. You must be from God because for sure nobody can do these things unless. Now Nicodemus was right. But there was also a place that he might have missed it. Because we know, even from scripture, that there are many teachers, even in the day of Jesus and of the apostles, who used to do things using other powers. See, Jesus was being accused of using C.G. Belze. Was it Belze? Izo, Izo Belzez, siju kama mwisho ni L amani B. Izo, alikuwa anatumia kitu wewe. Alikuwa anaaccusiwa of using those things. So it is possible, it is true that the things that Jesus was doing, he was doing empowered by God. But it is also true that there are people that can blind our eyes because of the great display they are putting of miracles and wonders using other evil powers. A friend of mine likes to tell me that one of the deceptions of the enemy that he uses to blind believers is to convince them that the devil is not real. One of the tools that the devil uses to blind us is to convince us that he is not real. Have you ever sat within yourself and said, but these people are too spiritual. They're saying, it is if you don't influence your shetani. Aye, in entertainment too. The enemy uses such tricks and such tricks so that we can remain complacent. So that we can just look around and think, I see even the watu wanakuanga. Kijana wa miaka kaa ya angu, I mean, like, lazima kuna vitu zingene zanyo ufaya. I mean, mnataka kuna mbesa ni kwe boring kama... One of the biggest deceptions and lies that the, or tools or weapons that the enemy uses to deceive us as believers is just to simply convince us that he does not exist. Because when you believe he does not exist, you do not fight him, you do not go out against him, you do not desire to cross on over to the other side because you don't believe there is another side, the side of life. So you go to Jesus yourself. Jesus responds to him and says, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Unless one is born again. Unless I love the language that Jesus uses. He puts a lot of finality with it. There is no more argument. You can go and argue na uko kuingine. Bakini hapa tunasema, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now that shatters every other line that will ever come or that is present right now of telling people there are many ways to life. There are many ways to God. You can just be kind and loving. Just be a kind person. Jesus shatters that thought when he says such things that I say to you unless one is born again. There are not many ways to the Father, beloved. There are not 10 steps to your new life. There are not 50 principles that you may follow to get to into the kingdom of God. Jesus says, unless one is born again. You might like it, you might not like it, you might feel like it, you might not feel like it, but unless you get born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And the question and response to that must first be what? Sandadu. And number two, lazima niyokoke. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Tell your neighbor you must be born again. So what does it mean to be born again that Jesus is talking about? Essentially it just means to have new life. To begin life anew. To begin life afresh. The theological term that is used for this is regeneration. Okay? Kuanzia kitu kutoka mwanzo tena upia in a new way. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Now you see, this is not something that we can do for ourselves. If Jesus had said, unless you are washed, you cannot see the kingdom of God, then we might think to ourselves, ah, I can wash myself and come into the kingdom. 
But that's not what Jesus says. He doesn't say unless you are washed. He says unless you are born again. Because one cannot bath himself. In that one statement again, Jesus shatters the lie that continues to ravage our generation in that we are self-made. I have created myself. I have made myself anew. I was born from the ashes and poverty, but I have beaten the system. I have worked by my own strength and I am self-made. I'm standing here because I have made myself. That's a lie. In the words of Jesus, he brings it out again and says, unless one is born again, a thing that nobody can do for themselves you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. Please turn to your neighbor, look at them with a beautiful smile, tell them you're not self-made. In that statement, we understand we need help. Beloved, you need help. I need help. We need help. We must Go to the one that can actually give it to us. You cannot bath yourself. You needed the help of your parents to first be formed. It doesn't matter how great or mighty you have grown to become. It doesn't matter how great or shiny your future is going to become after this in Jesus' name. It doesn't matter all that because you needed help. You couldn't have brought yourself. Nobody sat in the darkness and void of the before life and you just wished yourself into existence. If only I can concentrate, I can be born. Nobody can do that. Jesus says, unless you are born again, it then takes you back to the uselessness of the power that we might feel we have in and of ourselves. Jesus points this man, this great ruler, back to the need he has because bath is a thing you cannot give to yourself. Bath is a thing you cannot do by your own strength. You need help. And that's one of the statements that Jesus is passing on to this man. He says to him, you need help. You are designed for dependency. God has created you to need somebody else. That is why it doesn't matter how many things you get or do. Unless you get them from the sustaining hand of God, you will never have enough. That's why we find this rat race. That you wake up and you're running after this thing and you're running after this thing and you get it and then it goes away. Have you watched the movie Ice Age? And that Nini, what was his Nini, was, is trying to get that acorn. And it never comes, but in the final, but spoilers guys, in the final he gets it. Just before they shut down the whatever, in the franchise. Before they shut it down, he got it. That's a spoiler for those of you who haven't watched it yet. But that's how a lot of us are. You try to repackage yourself. Unakuja hivi life inakupiga unanguka chini. Unatulia chini siku mbili unajiri package. Unajiri brand. Sama I'm back. Unarudi. Ukirudi tena tia. Inakugonga. Unajiri package tena. Unakuja sasa na luga ingine. Unangushwa chini. Ata unajaribu kuingia kwa kanisa by the way this time. Unakuja lakini kuna ile kitu moja enye lazima ufanye enye ufanye. Because our good works, our service in church, even if you got here at four in the morning to panga the things, still you do not get into the kingdom in that way. You just simply must be born again. Tell your neighbor you need help. Yeah. Hallelujah. So Jesus answers to him. No, Nicodemus verse 4 says, How can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? You see, the question that Nicodemus is asking Jesus is not a... We might think that Nicodemus is just a dull person. You're thinking, why don't you get it? But you must understand that Nicodemus doesn't have the kind of knowledge that most of us have right now by reading the scriptures. Being a teacher of the law, being a Pharisee back in the day, they used to believe, if Jesus had said to him that unless a Gentile be born again, then Nicodemus would be like, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true, these Gentiles, they have it bad. Mm -mm, terrible people, terrible, terrible people. Mm, they got it bad. The, the matrix didn't do them good because Genti Gentiles, because the Jews used to be the people who believed that this thing is for us. The Messiah is for us. We are the top-notch creme de la creme of humanity. All y'all Gentiles, including you and I, by the way, guys, who are not Jews, we were doomed into a bad thing. But blessed be God that he came down in the form of a man. And then he opened the doors wide open and says, you can come, and you can come, and you can come, and you too can come, because the Father's house had been opened now for all of us. 
that now anyone who accepts Jesus Christ as Lord can get to come and sit at the table with him. One of the very interesting passages or examples that I find, Pastor Francis used to make and he used to say this. You see, Jesus could have stood at the balcony of heaven at the entrance of the tent and says, okay, you guys, my father has forgiven all of you. Great people. I'm not ambitena. Love for Rudy and the curtains fall again. But Jesus, in his death, dramatically rips the temple curtain into two from top to bottom, making sure that you and I have access, making sure that you and I can come right into the presence of God, making sure that us who are not a people now have been called the children of God, making sure that us who had no name now have, we bear the name of the king. That is what Jesus did. That is why, what he did for you and for me, the Gentiles. <laughs> What Nicodemus is asking Jesus is a fair question. In other words, it could also be symbolically to be looked at this way. He's asking, how can a man be born again? Can, he, I get, can I again enter into my mother's womb? What, Jesus is, what Nicodemus could easily also be asking is, is it possible to teach an old dog new tricks? What, what do you mean that now I've come into the kingdom? You see, a lot of us, we come into the kingdom and we are just like Nicodemus. We come in and they're like, Nimeokoka, lakini this is how I am. You're saying I can't change. Even Donakwanga, this is my temperament. This is my personality. I'll stop looking at me like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Or to like. Sana John Mekosea, lakini ibon diomina kwanga. Like, mbona, 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 uki, acha ni ngile alatu wenye tunasav, please nitumie ni, ni saidi ni nitumie example enyu, mkotu like, tunafakifika hapa this time, unafakifika, kama ukuji, sema ukuji, okay, like, okay, mina kwanga hivyo, sazi ngile personality yangu itakangi, personality yako itakangi nini, we wacha tabi yako mba, <laughs> And I'm talking about, I'm not talking about that one time, I'm talking about it happens every single time, you are never relied upon. Alafu utakuja useme, nini yata amunyekangi kwa schedule ya kuserve? Mini liji volunteer kuserve, lakini amunyekangi kwa schedule. Tuta kwekaje na ukujangi, unatu stress tu. Na kwa personal. <laughs> what Nicodemus is asking Jesus is, listen, how can a person who is already grown go again back to being a child and start again? It's the same question on our minds. How is it possible that me with my 30 years plus or minus one how is it possible that i can be born again and start afresh how can i start to live a new life and start to teach myself to not like the things i like i have had practice to like these things my flesh desireth these things i love these things how can you all of a sudden tell me that now that i am a believer i'm a believer i can no longer talk like that or walk like that or dress like do you know how many years it has taken me to know how to dress my body type and then now i have come into the faith and you're telling me you can't dress like that i love jesus and god is inside and jesus anyway sees the inside of a man so he's not worried about my clothes. It's true. Jesus will not be tripped by your clothes. He sees you naked in the shower. But there is your brethren to look at. That is one another ring that Wanjala reminded us about in the midweek service. This new life. That's why when you look back at yourself and how you are so wired and stuck in your ways, you realize, I need help. You see, that's the whole conversation that Jesus is trying to make. That Nicodemus, you need help. You need help. You must be born again. You can't bath yourself. That's why you must go to the one who can give you new bath. You can't change your old ways because you're an old dog. <laughs> you need help. Let your neighbor tell them you need help. 
So Jesus begins to speak to him in these words that completely just have shaped all of Christianity and continue to do the same. Most assuredly, I say to you, verse 5, unless one is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter this, um, the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel at what I say to you. You must be born again. You must turn to your neighbor one more time and just tell them, you must be born again. Being born again of the water and of the spirit, what Jesus is referring to, uh, uh, paints a very beautiful contrast between the physical bath, which is what we call water, and the spiritual bath, which is what we call being born of the spirit. It talks about being regenerated. Remember we said this new life we're talking about is, is being regenerated, is going back to the beginning, receiving a new, fresh start. So it talks about this being born of the water and of the spirit. It talks about being regenerated by the spirit and signifying that rebirth, that rebirth that we find by, um, by Christian baptism. All right? So that's the other thing. The water may also represent the cleansing action of God's Holy Spirit. What the word of God does when Jesus is speaking to his disciples, John 15 and 3, says to them, you are now clean because of the words I speak to you. The Bible says in the book of Titus chapter 3 from verse 4 to 6, allow me to read it. It says, but when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Christ Jesus our Savior. Regeneration. The Bible says the same in James chapter 1 verse 18. It says, of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creations. We're talking about the new birth, the regeneration. The Bible says again in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 6, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, not just the Gentiles, even the Jews, not just the teachers of the law, even the students of the law, not just the rich, even the poor. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, behold, a new beginning. The new has come. Regeneration. Being born again. Now Nicodemus must have known these things that Jesus is talking about from the Old Testament teachings. He was a Pharisee after all. He must have known these things. Must have read in Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 25. It says that then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. He says to them the promise that God is making back in the day that I will give you a new heart. And put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will keep my judgments and do them. Nicodemus must have known these things. But they didn't just seem to sit very right because they were not talking about the Gentiles. They were talking about Jews. We thought that that work was already half done. And you see, you might not be the Jew in this story, but many of us think or we have the mentality, carry the mentality around that we are not such bad people ourselves. I mean, me seems this, Anna. I just left the overtake wrong side. I don't know if I'm going to go to the last time. Mimi nimeka tu ile chakula inanitosha kwa line ya watu kwa nini? Kwani mwenye alikuwa anataka kukula vizuri angekuja mapema ama? No sifanyangi vitu mbaya. Are those things surely I mean hata nyinyi hata nyimu natuwekelea. Si vitu mbaya. Kwani Si not I'm not a very bad person. Like kwani ku ghost mtu tu kumnyamazia tu mtu tu kumghost tu hivi na mliko. Kwani kitu mbaya. See your story too, come in Asia, see me. <laughs> the fact that we don't see the wrong things with the wrong things that we do is enough proof for you and I that we need help. Tell your neighbor you need help. We need help. So the conversation continues and Jesus is speaking to him. 
and we skip to verse 11 and it says, Most assuredly I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, because Nicodemus had asked, how can these things be? Now Jesus is saying to him, listen, if I speak even these earthly things, I'm using earthly examples and you do not understand. What about if I begin to tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended from heaven, that is the son of man who is... Um, but he who has come down, sorry, from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the son of man must be lifted up. Verse 15, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Germany, Bonaiso Sifiwe. These are the words of Jesus. The passage that Jesus is referring to is an Old Testament passage of a story when the um, Israelites were wandering in the wilderness. And one of those days as they are wandering, they are so unhappy about the treatment they are getting in the wilderness because food, they were slaves. By the way, let me just mention this just in case you haven't read that story. In Egypt, they were slaves. They were not living the high life or the soft life. Life had never been harder than that. They had been born into the hard life, into the difficult, terrible life of slavery. 400 years plus of slavery, ordained or allowed by God, true, but slavery nonetheless. So the thing they are desiring and missing, the life they are looking back at and being like, I wish we just went back to Egypt, was nothing desirable. It was what they knew. It was them asking, how can you now teach an old dog new tricks? The same question that Nicodemus seemed to be asking. How can you then begin to bath a new people? Because God, in bringing out Israel from captivity, is creating for himself a new nation. His own nation. It's a nation that is a family. These 12 um, tribes, these 12 people who have been brought into Egypt. That's how they come into Egypt. You remember the story of Joseph, which you don't have time to get into? That's how they come into Egypt. And then they begin to grow. God is allowing Egypt to be a womb for the nation that he is creating for himself. But then while they are there, they are, they are contaminated by the religion, the practice, the lie of Egypt. So God brings them out through the wilderness. While he's bringing them through the wilderness, something that should have been a quick, maybe 40-day journey, turns into a 40-year journey. Why? Because how can you teach an old dog new tricks? How is it possible for a man to go back into his mother's womb and be born again? How are you trying to create a new nation out of these people that are the very same ones? And God says to them, challenge accepted. And he takes them around and sheds off that weight such that of the people that left, only those two are able to make it into the promised land. The ones who have actually allowed God. Even though me, I will become a new person. Akina Joshua and Caleb. Even Moses himself does not make it. Man, tell your neighbor you need help. The narrative is the same. So the children of Israel are stuck out there and they are complaining that they are not getting as good treatment as they used to get in Egypt. Are you kidding me? You are in freedom. But now, you're like, this freedom I taste poor. What you are making it to if you didn't want to charaz, want to jua, though, could look on a little pillar of Claudia Mungu. What could you have to collect? Manakumuka melons, sir. Melons. Melons in the vitus and Yamamis. Okay, you won't have to miss anything in your wilderness, I would imagine. Na garlic. Garlic. Una miss heartburn. I mean, that's what you're asking. The Bible says that they desired to go back so bad that in the past they used to speak against Moses. This time they speak against Moses and against God. They had never done it before. The generations that had come before them, before that time, had never done it before. They had never spoken about against God. They used to speak out against Moses. Let me bring it closer. Will you go a prefect to your high school? Me will go a prefect. Talk of one. 
ni god ni god manze <laughs> um and i continued by the way hadi nikimaliza shule nikuwa kwa big five. i mean god ni god live to god fine <laughs> anyway um the people that i got into form 1 with when we were, i was prefect with them in the class to tumeenda nao form 2 tumeenda nao form 3 kifika form 4 nimekuwa captain au watu wa union kama captain uni uni mwashi guard nakuza sema excuse me school where where are you please just let me una jinua sikuwa mkubwa hivi nikiwa shule una hey those those form 4s that are back there are you form 4s aye mwashi guard acha kelele wewe acha nini that's like the example that most of these people who had left with Moses it's Moses guys Moses has come from you guys Moses has come with new commandments <laughs> like what is God saying this time Moses I mean, so I said, ah, we shall not ah, we shall honor our father and our mother <laughs> wow how did you come up with that bro you're just in the mountains just living the good life while you are suffering down here it's just living the good treatment there so they used to speak against Moses it wasn't an unusual thing but this time they spoke against Moses and against God and I think the nerve the audacity those the wretched Israelites before you go any further you realize you and I are also the same we think we don't speak out against God but our complaining is exactly against God God that has put us in these places because of social media and the society and culture around us we think to ourselves that we know what is best for us so we draw ultimatums for God God if you don't answer by Friday <laughs> I don't even the nerve the audacity a friend of mine likes to say the a in man is for audacity I mean so I think those Israelites must have been wrong people. How could they speak out against God? Nah, so my God, if you don't deliver me from this thing, me, me, so that I can serve Basi. Because I mean, I take only deliver and only serve in effectiveness. I love to be able to go up in cycles and in the... Shh. Shut up your mouth. I mean, me, I can never speak out against God. Against God. Can you move on, Mungu? Two seconds later. Like, let me just tell you. Me, by the way, bro, I'm a I just complain. I just com- me, I just complain. I'm not just complaining. Lakini, me, me, kuna vitu zingine tu mesha agree na mungu. There's a level of comfort lazima mungu akupati. Una jo kiona? Just sit down and talk to Job, brother Job in the Bible. God is the one who offers his CV to the devil. It wasn't the devil. It comes like, um, ni me angali anoko kunamse na itwa Job. God is like, have you considered my servant Job? Job was just chilling. You ask yourself, is my CV possibly being offered up in heaven as we speak right now? I'm just like... And many times God is sending us to do things or calling us to do some things and you're just like, Staki kuingia sana kwa kanisa? Ndiyo, eh, juni kuingia kwa zile vitu God anambia, iyo, kovu, kovu sana. God had a deal na mimi, so una decide, hacha ni kaya hapa inje. So we are walking in obedience thinking we are hidden from God. On Friday, we had an amazing conversation with one of my brothers here, and we were just talking about, in Psalm 139, when scripture is asking, the psalmist is asking, where can I go to escape from your presence? If I go to the highest places, you are there. If I go to the lowest of lows, you are there. He says, if I made my bed in hell, there you are. So where is this that you're going that God is not? So in the wilderness, we are there crying out against God just like the Egyptians, not, not Egyptians, or oh, it would have been nice if it were the Egyptians, right? If it were the, the Israelites, we are crying out. And they cry out against Moses and against God this time. And God is just like, fiery serpents on all of y'all. And many people died. The story records Numbers chapter 21 from verse 8 to 9. Many people died. Many people died. Then these same people realize, whoa, what did we do? I said, mechoma, mechoma, mechoma. They go to Moses. And they're like, Moses, please talk to God on our behalf. And Moses goes and talks to God, and God is like, okay. You create another big fiery serpent and set it up. If anybody looks at that serpent, they will be saved. That's such a simple thing to do. Just look at the serpent and leave. But scripture records that there are many people that, ma- that died. And in my own thinking, I would imagine, there are also people that must have died because they must have thought it's so easy an instruction. What else do we need to do so that we can live? 
I just need to look up and leave. But that is such a simple instruction because culture and society around us teaches us that we must work and do things with our hands to earn our salvation. But salvation is not by works. You can't give it to yourself. You must be given birth to by somebody else. Or given birth by somebody else. It's not something you can do for yourself. The Israelites must have thought, what else must we do? So this is it. The deal is too sweet. And society has hammered it in our minds since we were born that when the deal is too good and we don't know where to draw the line. So even when we come to Jesus and he says, only believe, only believe, all things are possible, only. It's just like, okay, fine, I'm believing, but what else? What am I not doing? I need, I need to do something. Okay, if you're already believing, keep believing then. Stay right there. Telling you, you need to pray. If you want to have an encounter with God, if you need to meet with Jesus, continue to pray. And you're like, okay, I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm praying. Why is God not appearing? I'm praying. I'm praying. Guys, I'm praying. I'm pr See, you continue praying. Continue praying. If I tell you for you to get the money that you want from the ATM, you need to queue at the ATM. I'm queuing. You can't queue faster. There are some things you just have to keep doing. See, I'm queuing. I'm queuing. How can I queue better? There's no queuing better. Queuing is queuing. Because when you get out of line to go into the front of the queue, it might look like you're queuing better, but you're cheating. So go back to the line and stand there and wait. It says, look to Jesus and leave. You can't look better. If you're looking at Jesus, stay there. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, stay there. A lot of us are drunk with the kind of theology for doing something. What must I do? What must I do? The rich young ruler is coming to Jesus and he's asking, what must I do to get eternal life? And Jesus is saying to him, oh, you want to do something? Keep the commandments. He says, I am doing them. I've been keeping them since I was born. He's like, okay, go and sell all your possessions. Give them away. Come and follow me. Then he goes away, angry and sad, frustrated. Sell my possessions? I mean, sell my possessions? Sell? Because in that one place, Jesus has revealed what his true heart is. That he holds on to his possession more than he needs eternal life. Tell your neighbor you need Jesus. Our salvation, beloved, happens when we look up to Jesus. When we believe that he will save us. When we believe that he will sustain us. When we believe that he can keep us. When he, we believe that he will lead us to the very end. When we believe that even though we don't do what the other people in our generation are doing to get ahead, God can get us ahead. Here's an example that Pastor Beatrice gave many, many years ago. And she said it and it stuck with me. She says, God lifts up. The world throws up. You see, the problem about throwing up is this, beloved. When I throw up, I don't sustain it up. When I throw up, I don't sustain it. I throw it, and I'm about my way. But God lifts. Umoy panda lift, wewe. Lift in enanga namna gani? Unaenda fourth floor. Sema, oh, I'm unaenda tenth floor. Sema, oh, ju unaenda tenth floor, wacha tukwandisha haraka. Jua! No, in a kulif, ata kama hakuna mtu mwingine kwa hizi floors akatikati, you must go through all the floors. A lift that takes you to that other one is a banana ride. That's madness. You will live there vomiting and puking. I mean, some of you are already vomiting in normal lifts. When you stay in the process of God, what he's doing is that he lifts you up. Humble yourself before the Lord and in due time he will not throw you up, beloved. Let's not be drunk with this nini for I want to get ahead so bad. Ambition is good, but let it be godly ambition. Let it be the kind that will, you want to get ahead, but in God's time and God's way and God's process. If you're desiring a child, for instance, today, you're married, you've done everything right, and you're like, God, I need a child. And God says, aha, great, receive your child. And the child is in your belly. You realize, ha, I am pregnant. Go and share it with your husband. You tell them, we are pregnant. Like, oh my God, we are pregnant. We live in a beautiful day, right? Because us guys can also be pregnant with you guys. Wonderful. All right, so we are pregnant. Great, we are pregnant. Even though you have desired so much to get this child, you and I both know that if the child came at the end of that one month, then it's not what you guys desired. That's the kind of preterm that cannot even make it. A lot of us, are desiring through our works 
to receive the results of our hard work and our hard labor. It has not gone through the process, so you're receiving runny eggs and complaining. What God gives is not good. What God is releasing from his kitchen is not even well made. Just sit down then and keep looking to him. Let the process continue to do its work. Count it all joy, brethren, when you go through all kinds of trials and tribulations because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And when perseverance has done its work, you and I are complete lacking nothing. So look to Jesus. If you're looking, stay there. Watch out for solutions in Guinea. Zico, by the way, see at Yakuna solution, Zico, but Niza could throw up. Watch a Mungwa could lift up. Akifika mali ya kusimamishe, fanya kenyu unafanya kwa hiyo level. Ukimaliza kuja wingie tena tuende juu. Because when the Lord lifts, he sustains. Look to Jesus and live. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 45 verse 22 as we wrap this up, it says, Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. Salvation is found in no one else but Jesus Christ. You must be born again to enter into the kingdom. If you want eternal life, you must leave everything behind and come and follow me. There are no other ways. It's just one prescription. You must be born again on his terms in his way, the way he desires, and depend on the leading of his spirit. You might not get it right, but at least you're staying in that place. He has called you something, then believe in what he has called you. He says, you are my son, you are my daughter. Today, whatever you desire, I am giving to you. Believe that he is giving you everything, then stay to receive it in the physical. I mean, like, God is a liar. Oh, he's saying he has given me all things. But look at the way I'm living my life right now. Your problem is that you're looking in the wrong places. Because on the outside, we might be looking like this. Simple tones. But on the inside, the work that God is doing by his spirit, beloved. You're looking for true peace? Stay in the place of Jesus. Wait on him. Again, I say, wait on him. But when the peace is not coming today, like a friend of mine challenged me again to think on Friday again as we were having the conversation. Just we say, Sin koko presence of God, me kujako God's presence, and bona mambo zinenda vibaya. Na Bible ne tama in his presence there is fullness of joy. Palestine chapter six una ijuayote sixteen. Nisawa. Ah, in the presence there is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures evermore. Mina singa nanga kwa place ya God na savingi. Na penda God me okoka si atangi zivi tuzote. Muna God and fanya ivi basi. Ah, and that okay basi akuna difference si yonye tu me okoka. Might it be that our challenge is the way we understand pleasures? He says in his presence. There is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures evermore. We think that joy is laughter and celebration all the time. It's possible to have joy in chaos. That old Italian saying that says, now that the house is on fire, let us warm our bodies. Because if we will not do anything, kama kuna chomeka, moto ispote bure, ni usiku kuna baridi, tuote bas. If the Lord has decided to warm our bodies thus, Thus shall be our lot. Whatever my lot thou has taught me to say, it is. That is the posture of a person that is waiting on the Lord. It says, look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. As he continues in finally, he says to him, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever beloved believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This message of good news comes from the very mouth of the son that was sent. It is not the words of a commentator. It is not the words of a preacher or a teacher. It is the very words of the son that was sent. It says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 
Who is God in the words of Guzik? He says, God is the almighty authority, the source and the sustainer, the creator of all things, the beginner of all things. In the beginning, God. For God, the almighty authority, so loved the world. That was the mightiest motive. That he loved the world so much. That was the reason he did what he did. It says that he gave his only begotten son the greatest gift. That whoever, that is the widest welcome, that the door has been swung open for you and I, beloved, what Jesus did when he stood, he left the camp and came down to be with us and dwelt among us, he was saying, you can come and you can come and you can come. That whoever believes, if anybody, we have the widest welcome, beloved. If you're seated there and you haven't accepted that welcome, you are missing out. It doesn't negate the welcome, you're just missing out on the welcome. It says that whoever believes in him, and that's the easiest escape, beloved. To believe in him is the easiest escape from the wrath of God. Anyone that believes in him, if only you look and live, it's such an easy escape, it seems almost impossible. What else must I do? Nothing. Believe in him. Believe in him to save you. Believe in him to change you. Believe in him to sustain you. Believe in him to deliver you. Believe in him and nothing more. If anyone believes in him, we have the easiest escape of all times. Ukienda kwa yule mchawi kwa kweli anakwambia leta kuku mousi. Leta mkia wapanya mfu. Leta sijui manyoya sijui ya nani. Leta sijui nyueleza sijui babu ya nani. Unamtoa wapi babu uyo mwenyewe. Difficult things, but you see human beings. Nyueleza babu jamani. Babu yako anamuka kipara jamani ya shindu Wakwenda shakahola unambiwa mafuta haya fanya hivi. Sijui kitambaa hiki fanya ni. Sijui enda ufanya. Funga siku arbae. Siku arbae na funga. <laughs> sound effects. We are made to think about such, to do difficult things. Other people out there, the solutions of human beings. Ah, my sister Gloria ni mekosea. Nisamehe jamani. Ah, unataka nisamehe. Ah, ya sasao. So, utakuwa unanitumia... Afu ishirini kila mwezi, sama au wa msamasi utaki basi. We are made to do crazy things by the systems of the world, but we do them. Okay, babe, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. Babe, I'm so sorry. It's like, okay, it's fine. But every day before you go out, you have to be calling me, sending me a screenshot of who you're talking with. So that I can trust you again. And you're like, okay, fine. Okay! Okay! <laughs> We live in a system where we must do things to get the freedom and liberty to continue enjoying those things. But God has given us the easiest escape. He says, whoever believes in me, if you just look to me after you have been beaten by the venom and the snake of sin, death and destruction, you shall live. But you're like, no, 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 no. That's too good to be true. That's too good. Come to Bible study. Unauliza, okay, so kwa bebo study mbona mtu, mtu paki mafuta, mbona mtu chang, hii holy communion tunafatue, tunakunywa shots za mafuta ya anointing. Ndiyo yende ikisafisha kenye ikuko ndani. Kwa like, hii mambu umetoa wapi, tukikata hiyo, unaenda unatafuta kanisa yenye nafanya hizo vitu. Ndiyo usiki umefanya kitu, ndiyo upate deliverance yako. If only you believe in him, you have the easiest escape, beloved. We have the easiest escape. It says, should not perish. We have the divine deliverance, beloved. We should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the priceless possession. And that is what God has assured to us today. Beloved, I bring you the words of Jesus Christ himself to Nicodemus, but to all of us a freeing truth. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I don't know whether you came to the house today and listening to all the things we are saying, you are born again but you realize you need help. 
If that is you, I pray that you just open up your mouth and begin to ask God to help you. Begin to ask God to help you from those places you've been trying to do things by yourself, that you will come to him in faith. In the name of Jesus. All of us need help. Every one of us is praying in the name of Jesus Christ. And maybe you came to the house as the rest are praying and you've never given your life to Jesus. Or you have given your life to Jesus, but you in the depth of your heart know you're no longer with Jesus. You no longer, you're no longer living your life for him. If you are there, beloved, I would that you just lift up your hand and consider giving your life back to Jesus. If you're there, we'd love to pray together with you. If you lift up your hand, we don't have the time. You cannot be out there too long. You can't hold up. Just lift up your hand if you want to give your life to Jesus and say, Lord, I need you. 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 Come on, do not be silent. Everyone is asking for help. We have the mightiest, the mightiest. We have the easiest escape, beloved. The easiest escape that has been given. We only need to believe. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. Are you there? You've not given your life to Jesus. We have the easiest escape today into the greatest possession. If anyone believes in him, would that be you today? Would that be you? If you lift up your hand, we will see it. We'll pray together with you. We will welcome you into the kingdom. Maybe you're thinking, I need to clean up my act. Maybe where I was last night was not a good place. Maybe what I did last week was a shameful thing. Ah, ah, beloved, if only you believe. If only you believe. If only you believe, beloved. You don't need to clean up your act. There are things you can't do for yourself. You can't give birth to yourself. The new life must be given by God. The new life must be delivered by God. And he has delivered it. All you need to do is to look and to live. If you're waiting to clean up your act, you will be waiting a long time. You will never make it. You need help, beloved. You need help. You need help. You need help. If you're struggling in a place you cannot deliver yourself, beloved, you need help. You need Jesus. He says that if anyone believes in him, maybe you're canceling out yourself in condemnation, but I bring you some good news that he has not come to condemn us. He says if anyone comes, if the harlot comes, if the thief comes, if the pastor comes, if the priest comes, if the wealthy come, if the poor come, if anyone believes in him, he shall not perish we have great salvation, but you shall have everlasting life. That great price, priceless possession has been promised of us today. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because today you have brought your word to us in simple 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 terms you've broken it down to us like you broke it down to Nicodemus back in the day that this man who did not believe we find him later in the same text in John 7 defending you and talking about you I pray that Lord you would touch our hearts so that Lord we would come to you first by believing in you not by the things we want to do if there is anyone here, Lord Jesus, who is struggling with the life that they are living and they are wondering how they can make it better before they come to you, reveal to us today that no one can give themselves birth unless you give it to us. Oh God Almighty, stir up our hearts. Reveal to us that we can't save ourselves. We can't make ourselves. We need you, Lord Jesus. And true, we might come and stumble, but only you can truly cause us to stand and to stand firm. We look to you today. We look away from all our idols. We look away from all the actions and the things we think we need to do to make ourselves right. We look to you. And Lord, there are those who are here and they're already looking to you. Give us the grace to keep looking. To stop looking for other solutions, but to just keep looking to you. Because you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son. That whosoever believes in you shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We reach into you and we receive the eternal life that you promised through faith in the son Jesus Christ. Help us, O oh God, to stay looking, to keep believing, and to keep trusting. Because we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Come on, let us appreciate our pastor better.